thank you so much for joining um, our webinar this afternoon um, for learning about early years education and teaching in early years in the UK, specifically um, through support of ANZ UK and working um, in the London Early Years Foundation Nurseries based across London. So um, we've got a, a really exciting session today where we've got um, Nick um, from the London Early Years Foundation um, and also Maria, who's in the background too, um, who'll be uh, joining us just to talk about um, all the things which is amazing about working um, at the London Early Years Foundation, um, which will be um, potentially new to a few of you on the call. I'm going to go to a small intimate bunch of us this afternoon. So um, we'll definitely be able to run through that and talk about ANZ UK and our the partner that we have with LEAF and how we can support your exciting journey onwards to the UK. So the webinar, we'll keep it, um, we'll do our utmost to keep it um, at the hour mark. So that will be 8pm in Australian Eastern time and then roughly about 10 o'clock in New Zealand. Um, so there's the Kiwis are on the call. Apologies. It might, it'll be a little bit of a later one for everyone down uh, in New Zealand. And um, we will record the session um, and feel free to post into the chat any questions you've got. We will allow for question time at the end of the webinar as well. Um, but feel free during the webinar to post any questions as you go. Um, Nick, myself and Joe will be um, able to get back to them across the, the webinar. Um, if we know we're going to come up to a question later on, we might say we'll, we'll come to that in, in you know a later moment. But um, yeah, really encourage everyone to post into the chat um, and you can turn your camera on or off. Um, we we um, promise we won't bite um, across the webinar. Um, but yeah, really excited for everyone to be here. So we'll get stuck on into it and we'll start off with an acknowledgement of country. Um, so we respectfully acknowledge the traditional custodians of these lands, the Warren Jiri we were rungs people of the Kulin Nation on which we are meeting today. We recognise their continuing connection to lands, waters and skies. Um, we pay our respects to elders past, present and extend that to respect to all First Nations people present today. So um, I myself am um, do, uh, doing the call from our Collingwood office. Um, we'll do an introduction in a second. That's why we've done the welcome to country um, for that specific First Nations um, group. Um, jo is uh, in London. Um, so Jo will give an hello in a second. Um, she's working out of our London office. Uh, and then Nick is working out one of the leaf nurseries. Um, I'm, I can't remember where what Nick, uh, what nursery Nick is exactly at today, but I'm sure he'll tell us uh, in a second. <laughs> Um, so what we'll go through today. So the idea for today that you'll meet um, the team at ANZ UK Education. We'll introduce ANZ UK in more detail in the next couple of slides too, just so you know exactly who we are. Um, and we'll introduce LEAF as well. So you have um, have a really good understanding of the amazing not-for-profit uh, charitable social enterprise um, that um, Nick will be representing for this afternoon. And we'll talk about um, what it's like to work in a LEAF nursery, hopefully when you make that journey onwards to the UK. Um, We'll talk about what it's like to work in a leaf nursery as well. Um, so the the comparisons from working in early childhood education in Australia, making the journey onwards to the UK, um, will hopefully um, hold everyone in really confidence said that you um, will be able to carry your skill set over and your qualifications and all that will um, have we recognise too. So we'll talk through all that in a lot of detail. Um, and then the process as well. So like I'm sure everyone on the calls, um, obviously you've got an interest to move overseas, which is amazing. And we know that it's not a small move either. Um, moving from Australia to the UK, it's a big jump. So we'll um, talk through arrival dates. We'll touch on visas. Um, we'll run through the relocation bonuses on offer. Um, the qualifications just touched on then, what work options are available, and then how to go through the interview process as well. And we'll talk about um, the steps you can take to in on interview online or in person, et cetera. Lots of exciting stuff there. And then the communities and events. Um, this picture here is from an ANZ UK welcome event, um, which we just had one literally on the weekend that Joe was at, which we'll talk about in more detail. Um, and the real big part about ANZ UK and LEAF um, is we're very much aligned in our community relationships um, values. So we really want to make sure you're supported with your move. So um, a lot to cover for today. Uh, but really hoping that um, everyone on the call learns enough about the move, the move to the UK, LEAF and ANZ UK, that you're keen to yeah, take those forward next steps and end up um, one of these very happy individuals uh, coming into the amazing city of London. Sweet. So we'll do a couple introductions uh, just to ourselves. Um, so I'll kick off and then I will handball over to the amazing Joe and to Nick. Um, so myself, uh, my name is Tyler and I'm our overseas recruitment team leader. And um, I've been working with ANZ UK for just over or nearly coming up to six years now. I'm originally um, a peer health teacher from Melbourne um, and I lived in the UK from 2016 to 2020, um, where I um, taught for about one year, then also worked in our London office for three years as well 
well. So I've got a really good understanding of um, supporting educators making the journey to the UK. Um, in 2020, I moved home to Melbourne. Um, I've been living there ever since and um, helping educators such as everyone on the call making that exciting journey to the UK. Um, living and moving overseas is li really one of the best things I personally have ever done and a really big advocate for helping people make that journey onwards to the UK. And I know that the journey ahead of you hopefully through LEAF, um, will be a truly amazing one. So I'm um, yeah, really excited to know about everyone's journeys in the follow-up and hopefully a bit during this webinar. Favourite country is Greece. Uh, get to the Greek islands if you can. You will love it. Um, if you don't love it, then um, I don't know what's wrong, uh, but you definitely will enjoy it. Um, but uh, my favourite um, yeah, island is also uh, Crete, too, just as a further tip there. And the favourite uh, fun fact, sorry, is travel to the World Cup for Brazil back in 2014, so 10 years ago now. Um, that's me. Um, I will throw over to Jo. Oh, thanks, Tyler. Um, so I'm also a teacher. Um, I taught in London in reception. So that's the very first year of school um, and year one for a few years when I first graduated as a primary teacher. Um, before I did the opposite move, I moved over to Sydney um, and Australia definitely my favorite place um favorite country in the world i ended up moving there just for well planning to just move there for a year um, and i stayed there for seven so absolutely loved it and it was here that i moved from teaching into working in early childhood and recruiting for early childhood educators and i absolutely loved that i was still close to the action but being able to work with educators on a daily basis and um, so then when i moved back to the uk and um, just about a year ago I moved back into um, early childhood recruitment with ANZ uk my fun fact is that I have seen Komodo dragons in the wild on my travels, not real dragons. <laughs> oh, wow. Are they real? <laughs> um, but I wonder if anyone here knows that um, dragons really are um, the national animal of Wales. So it's so another fun fact for you this morning. All your Great afternoon. One, <laughs> um, over to Nick. Good morning, everyone. My name is Nick and I'm the Sustainability Manager here at the London Early Years Foundation, but I'm also overseeing this project with our amazing recruitment team. I have been in Early Years for the last 17 years, where I started as an apprentice back in Australia, as you can probably tell by my accent or may not, because apparently I don't sound as Australian anymore. I worked my way up to being a Senior Manager for the London Early Years Foundation, where I ran our central office nursery, and I also supported one of our area managers with an additional nine nurseries. I've recently celebrated five years at LEAF, so I love it. I've been in the UK for the last six and a half years as well. So as an expat, I was more than happy to jump on the bandwagon and help with this project. So just to encourage everyone to come over and join LEAF. Um, my favorite country is Croatia. I was literally there a month ago. It is cheap, it is cheerful. It's the seafood where you can see it coming in off the boat and then straight onto your plate. Everything is amazing in Croatia. We went on a tennis holiday. And we basically just sat in the sun all week. So I would highly recommend Croatia. Um, fun fact, I'm an avid gardener and plant propagation expert. I know that makes me sound really, really cool. Um, as a sustainability manager, I love plants and outdoors and gardening, that sort of thing. But I can literally propagate anything from anything. So I've grown lychee seeds in our lockers here, oranges, anything and everything I can grow, which is a useful and useless to, <laughs> skill to have, I have. Um, but also Maria's with me today, but she's just in the background. She's taking notes for us. And in future, you'll be seeing Maria in our webinars. Yeah, but amazing. She does, she does look like that in real life, so. <laughs> yeah, she's just <laughs> nice. And um, you can see here too, this is one of our educators, Laura, um, who recently moved from uh, Werribee um, in the Western suburbs of Melbourne. And if any Melbournians are on the call, you might be familiar with it. Um, and she has just started working um, with the London Early East Foundation um, in a placement in South London. Um, and it's probably about just uh, over or under a month in. So um, a real life story of someone who's made the journey from Australia um, to the UK and has started working in LEAF. So, um, yeah, really exciting that, um, you know, we can see, um, you know, these uh, the educators such as everyone on the call landing and, you know, touching down and working. So we'll chat through, um, you know, the steps that Laura took to make that journey. And, you know, really, um, hopefully from this um, webinar, everyone can feel really well informed about the decision and uh, the opportunity available through LEAF um, or with LEAF. And, um, yeah, we'll look to take those steps. But just quickly want to throw to a poll. Um, and then before Joe gives a bit more of an introduction into ANZ UK, um, we'd love to know where everyone is tuning in from. So if everyone just wants to um, just jump into the chat, which should hopefully pop up for everyone, um, and just sort of write back into the chats um, where you are tuning in from. So... Um, we've got Brooke from Melbourne, another Melbourneian on the call, Brooke. Amazing. Um, 
we're at um, doing the call tonight from our Collingwood office. So hopefully you're not too far from Collingwood. But, um, Sabrina from Canberra. Yes, the ACT. Amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's so good. Um, Brisbane, Perth. Nice. We had a good, good Yay, Brisbane. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, and we've had one uh, do a direct message, which was um, to, from Melbourne too. So a lot of Victorians on the call. Um, I'm glad, Nick, we've definitely got one um, from uh, the beautiful sunny state of Queensland and then Perth and ACT. Great. So no Kiwis on the call. Um, so hopefully we get a couple jump in a little bit later. It is a little bit past the Kiwi bedtime. So um, I think but, some are going to watch the video back later. So they'll I think be so. messaging yes. us and letting us know they're online tomorrow morning. <laughs> That's it. Um, but yeah, Joe, give us a bit of an intro to Ainsley UK. Yeah, so something that I think is super, super special about ANZ UK is that we are really a global organisation. We're one team, but spread out across the globe. Um, And some of you might be familiar maybe with your local offices for ANZ UK, um, but we actually have 29 offices literally spread all across the globe. So you can see that we're in New Zealand, um, all across Australia, um, regionally across the UK, and also we can support you with a move to the US even. Um, so we can support you, you know, even if you're looking at maybe wanting to work before you move uh, from Australia or New Zealand, if you're wanting to maybe move um, Nahima across from Melbourne to Brisbane, we can support you with that. Um, but also um, we're looking at your move to the UK and um, we're working regionally across the UK. So we have our London office, which is where I'm based at the moment, um, but also regionally, you know, Wales, Bristol, all over the UK. Um, but our Global um, outlook also means that when you, you know, heaven forbid, when your visa uh, does come to an end, (laughs) because unfortunately, you know, it sometimes, um, you know, is the end of your trip to the UK, we can support you with that move back um, as well. So just to cushion that blow when your your travels are over um, and make sure that you're, you know, you reach out to us and we can give you that wraparound care and find your dream position um, when you move back to Australia and New Zealand as well. Awesome. Um, and something that also I love about ANZ UK and was really, really important for me when I was looking for somewhere to work um, is to work with a company that really values the educators they work with. Um, and so many of the consultants here at ANZ UK come from a teaching background. Um, and we love working here because it really gives us the opportunity to create exceptional experiences, not only for the educators who we know you're traveling here, you want that exceptional experience with traveling and also working, but also um, with the children that you end up working with. We know that um, our work here at ANZ UK um, makes an impact with the children in the classrooms, in the centres. And we have that really, really clear goal um, to make sure that we place the right teacher in the right classroom or centre absolutely every time. And we're really value-based. We have a cute little anagram to remind remind us of our values here at ANZ UK. And it's be great. It reminds us that our values are belief, equity, growth, relationships, empower and attitude. And we try to make sure that we're living them every day um, that we're here. Um, And this photo um, is a great um, demonstration of us really embodying that value of relationships. And we've mentioned a couple of times about the festival that we threw at the weekend. Um, Well, this was, we don't have any of our sunny pictures yet to add in here to give it an update. Um, They will be coming. We've got glitter and color and sun and bunting um, from our festival, but this is our winter event that we threw for our educators. You can see everyone's rugged up with their ANZ UK beanies. Um, We make sure that, you know, we try to create that community when you come across that you're able to, um, you know, meet the newly arrived educators that are here in London as well. So you can hang out with them, make those connections and form a community. Um, We want to make sure that we have a relationship with you and that you've got a relationship um, with the other educators that are out here and working for ANZ UK. Yeah, spot on, Joe. It's so exciting to see these faces of educators. A lot of these um, educators were also like working in our Melbourne office or our Sydney office as an example too. So yeah, if you're wanting to do a bit of work locally before you jump on the plane, then um, yeah, definitely make sure you're letting us know that too. And as Joe mentioned on the flip side back, that's where we can really um, you know, help and support. 
So just a quick poll. Um, there's a few polls. So thank you for everyone for um, getting back to the last one. And then um, the next couple of slides, we'll talk about the London Early Years Foundation. Nick will lead on the next few slides. But if everyone just wanted to post into the chat again, just what everyone's experience is working within early. So we've mentioned early years a couple of times, but just to make sure it's uh, nice and clear for everyone, early childhood and early years, um, the, the, the um, phrase, we, uh, the, sorry, the terminology we use interchangeably in the UK, it is early years education, obviously in Australia and New Zealand, early childhood education. So if everyone just wanted to post into their into the chat, just their background, whether you've got a, a diploma, whether it's a certificate, whether you're an ECT, uh, maybe a centre manager, director, um, feel free just to post into the chat or new to early childhood space as well could be an option for people. Another one to pick out is that word nurseries. Some people think that nurseries is just the infants. It's just, um, yep. you know, the baby room. But nursery is one of those words that we use here in the UK for that whole period of, um, you know, from three months to five years from when we're going to start school. So you hear the word nursery and it doesn't just mean the nursery room. Um, it is, you know, any yep. early childhood centre. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Well, um, feel free everyone to post into the chat if you like. Um, but yeah, Nick, if you, you can definitely get started on this next slide, just as the um, as, as those answers come in. Even though Amy's given us an ECT. Thank you, Amy. Um, which is which is good. So it does help us um, with the next few slides when we talk about qualifications, what everyone's background and certs are. So um, that's really really helpful. Thank you, everyone. We've got Brooke here who's studying primary early education. She's almost finished in her second year. We've got certificate three as well. And diploma. Fantastic. Awesome. Thank you. But yeah, Nick, if you can introduce the, yeah, the LEAF and the London Early Foundation, that, that would be amazing for the next few slides. Not a problem, Tyler. So I'm still Nick from my introduction, so don't worry about that. <laughs> If you have any questions along the way about anything I'm talking about, I realise that some of the terminology we use may be different to what you expect or what you're used to. So please just put it in the chat if you have any questions about the whole process whatsoever or about LEAF in general. And we'll go through the questions. If I know that we'll be answering these questions in later slides, I'll just say we will be getting onto that. If it's a completely new question, I'll answer it there and then for everyone. But the London Early Years Foundation, we are a charitable social enterprise and we currently have 40 nurseries across 12 boroughs of London. We currently care for around four and a half thousand children and at the last count, I think we have 850 staff across all of the nurseries. So if you haven't heard the term charitable social enterprise before, it basically means that we don't make profit, we make surplus. So everything that we do earn from our nurseries goes back into the nurseries. By doing that, that allows us to offer the most funded places out of any nursery chain in the UK. So currently 30% of our children are on funded only hours. And that is only because we run the social enterprise model. So with cross subsidy models, we have nurseries in very affluent areas where we can have higher fees with the parents and they also know that they're part of a social impact with our other nurseries, but then the other nurseries, we can basically have free childcare for these nurseries because of the funded hours. So the cross subsidy models works is kind of like a Robin Hood effect, not that we steal or we rob or anything like that, but people who can afford more, they know that they're, they have a social impact in a different nursery as well. So much so that 70% of our nurseries are in deprived areas of London. And now when I say deprived, a lot of people go, oh gosh, like the slums or something. London is so big and broad and transient. You could have a uh, area of deprivation and then the next street over, you could have a 5.6 million pound house. So even where I am today, I'm in our central office nursery, which is also our original building from 1903. So we are celebrating our 120th years this year, but it's the original building from 1903. On one side, we have two council estates, which is complete council housing. If you go the street behind us, it's the Tate Modern of London and that general house prices is around 6 million now. It's literally one street across. So when we say areas of deprivation, it could literally just be a street across. But a lot of our nurseries, if we weren't in those areas, early years would not be present at all. So part of our model as well is we make sure that there's always a nursery in communities that need it. So every child has access to high quality education. Just because they're in an area of deprivation doesn't mean they shouldn't have access to quality education. So a lot of our nurseries we take over because if they shut, the children would have nowhere to go, the staff would have nowhere to go, those hubs of the community would basically be shut down as well. So we make sure that we're always focusing on areas of deprivation so we can expand our social impact. In saying that, 
not only do we provide high quality education across 12 boroughs of London, LEAF is so much more. We want to make sure, I don't know how to turn off chat because everything at times that pop up, I think there's a question. Oh, it's not a question. Thank you. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Um, so we do so much more than that. So being a social enterprise, basically to become a social enterprise, you need to be making sure that you have a social purpose. And of course, our purpose is providing high quality education to early years and areas of deprivation. So child poverty is something we really focus on. So we also have a broader aspect of what we do within LEAF. So it's unfortunate that we have to, but we also have the capabilities to provide food banks at currently seven of our nurseries. So these are the social impact nurseries where we found that parents were struggling to make ends meet. And by providing the funded hours, they knew that their child was having three square meals a day, but they weren't quite sure where the meals after nursery were coming from. So we managed to have partnerships with quite a few organizations that allow us to have food banks in these nurseries. So parents can take them home. They do home learning with them. We do uh, not cooking classes, but our chef lecture actually runs um, cooking classes in the nursery but just basically teaching them about nutrition and how you can make healthy meals and healthy options because a lot of these families they may not have that because it's cheaper to buy fast food or a ready meal or something like that so through no fault of their own they've never learned how to cook healthy so we send our chef lecture in and he does cooking classes all that sort of thing as well but we are able to support that we're opening nappy banks in a few of our nurseries because we were finding that parents were trying to toilet train their children earlier because the cost of nappies, I'm sure it's the same in Australia still, is getting through the roof. So the development of the child trying to be pushed to toilet train, as everyone knows here in early years, it does it is detrimental. So we did start nappy banks so parents can take nappies home. So when the child's ready, they can toilet train themselves. We have our separate leaf pedagogy as well, that if you join us, you will learn all about. There are seven strands and they, it's created by our CEO, June, but it takes the Tethariki program from New Zealand, Australia, Singapore, Montessori, uh, Piaget, we have theorists involved. It's basically everything from the best around the world that we've managed to squeeze into one pedagogy that you will learn about along the way. But on top of the EYFS here, which is our um, early years framework, statutory framework, sorry, we have the pedagogy on top because we want the best for our children and we basically make sure our teachers are trained up to the best as well. We have the Global Academy, so the training and L&D department, you have seven training days a year. So not only do we shut the entire organization down for our LEAF conference one, one day a year, you have two inset days within your nursery, and then you have additional days on top of that. So we run our own training department where you'll do your statutory training, so safeguarding, well-being, all that sort of things. But then we also want to extend our teachers as well. So you'll do things like woodworking, uh, outdoor, fire pits, fairy world, make and take, uh, helicopter story time, dialogic reading. The list is endless as well. So that's another exciting opportunity as well. Sustainability, award-winning sustainability at LEAF. That's my department. Uh, you'll learn more about that as well. So people might not be as interested as they are now, but we do run a level four qualification around sustainability, which I wrote with our CEO. We look at our carbon footprint, our green footprint, our environmental initiatives, our, another, I could talk about it all day, but I won't. So the Chef Academy is also a first. Um, action research, if you have a passion about something and you wanna extend an area of early childhood, we would more than happy to support you in that. So we currently do action research. I think we have four action research projects at the moment, which we're running alongside universities within the UK. And it's basically how children develop the best we can get out of children, why we do things in early years and things like that. Home learning, so parent workshops, apprenticeship programs. Uh, we have an apprentice manager and it's in another award-winning department of LEAF is our apprenticeship program is second to none. It is absolutely brilliant. And although you're not apprentices, you will meet apprentices and they are brilliant. Uh, staff wellbeing, we have uh, wellbeing groups, we have inclusivity groups, we've written books on inclusion and diversity, another thing that I could talk about all day. Uh, we have our SEMCOs within the nursery, which is another training program we run. And the two options there that you see as well, so access to funded only places. So like I said, 33%, I think in total, of our nurseries are entirely funded only places. So if we didn't allow the children to have access to that, they wouldn't be able to go to any nursery pretty much. And 
a lot of the nurseries within London, there's currently 20% are rated outstanding and they're in areas of high affluence where our nurseries, which are 70% in areas of deprivation, we're at 52% outstanding. So we expect the best and we want the best for our children. And with this uh, financial support doubling down, you probably aren't aware of what's happening with funding in the UK, but uh, children who are two can have access to two-year-old funding, which is 15 hours. But for the child, we found that it's actually better if they have 30 hours in nursery. And it's also better for the well-being of the parent because you can't really have a part-time job on 15 hours. You actually need 20 hours for a part-time job. So we managed to secure funding where we allowed our 15 year, our 15 year olds, our 15 hour children to access 30 hours. So we continue to do that. I, we are still doing that now. So we're able to support the families even more. So parents could go get part-time jobs for their own well-being. They could start studying. They could do things outside of their home where the children actually have developmentally moved forward quicker because they had access to higher quality education. So. Yeah, and there's so much you can see here, Nick. It's great to run through all that, like just how comprehensive some of the offers could be, um, some of the opportunities could be for educators who are looking to work with leave. So, you know, if you've got interest in different areas, um, it's really broad in terms of where you could, you know, sink your teeth into with leave. And, um, you know, the social impact model the leave's running is making such a big impact across the London, um, across different London communities and really uh, great impact in the London early years space. So the UK and more broadly as well, globally. So, yeah, exciting for yeah, Nick to continue work these slides. But, um, yeah, it just it's really good to see how much is on offer at LEAF. This is just a really nice diagram that we use quite a lot is that the child is literally at the heart of everything we do. So it starts with the child, all of our decisions are for the best interests of the child, but then we also make sure that we look after our staff and their well-being and how we can extend them as early as professionals. We make sure the parents are involved in every step of the way and how we can support parents in different ways. Our nurseries are part of the community in every single aspect. So a lot of our nurseries are the hub and we have several nurseries their parents were part of that nursery and are now bringing their children to those nurseries and it's the same manager from when they had them 20 years ago so it's quite incredible to see and we're trying to be advocates for early years as much as we physically can and the importance of early years so society in general we are very lucky to have June O'Sullivan who's our CEO and she is the voice of the children in early years she's an incredible woman amazing but she fights for early years and why we need to make early years more on the agenda of pretty much everything and how important it is so you'll also get to meet june eventually as well i say eventually she'll just pop in one day don't you worry about that uh, we like to finish with this one for the actual behind the scenes action so our mission is changing the world one child at a time it doesn't matter what area you live in your sex your what background you have every child deserves high quality education so accessibility that looks at our funded hours we make sure we have nurseries other organizations that can't offer the funded places anymore but we make sure that we always have funded places in all of our nurseries so accessibility every child deserves high quality education just because you're in a lower depth an area of deprivation doesn't mean the quality should be any different. So every single nursery is held to a very high regard about quality and affordability. Even though our nurseries in more affluent areas can afford it, we still don't want to just be not taking the mick. We still are very competitive in the whole area and we're still some of the cheaper options in all of the area. So. And there's old Catherine. She, if you, <laughs> oh, she, we need to change her title now though, don't we? We do actually, yeah. Wow, that's a really good pick up. There, apology. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> uh, right no, I just it as well. Uh, so, an outdated slide. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Was the Princess of Wales? Catherine is starting an early years program, or she has started, and how important the early years are. So we actually had her come in. <laughs> sounds strange. Serve breakfast at one of our nurseries because she was doing a healthy eating program. So she came to one of our nurseries and was part of our morning breakfast routine and helped us staff. She was absolutely lovely as well. She had the trolley, she had all the cereals and stuff. <laughs> it was lovely, but yeah. Yeah, well, I think it just shines a light on the um the high level of importance that um the early childhood and early years education is held from um you know the at the highest level in the UK. So yeah, those um early years developmental years are so important um in the child's um you know um growth and well-being. So yeah, and then when you're working in a leaf nursery, so looking at all all the great stuff about leaf, I know everyone in the course will be really interested to know what it's like um to work in a nursery on the other side of the world. Um, so yeah, Nick, if you just wanted to run through and yeah talk about um, the day in the life in a leaf nursery just to give everyone that overview yeah not a problem so 
this is one of the biggest changes that I had when I moved from Australia to the UK to be in part of a nursery is it does look very similar to what you'd expect in an Australian or New Zealand nursery. But we start with the day of breakfast with the children, greeting the families, free play time, setting up provocations, being organized for the day, circle time. But the big change for me was the garden and outdoor time. So as part of one of the strands of our pedagogy, safe, fit and healthy, all of our children have three hours of physical activity a day as a minimum. But being in London, which is one of the best cities in the world, they go on trips and outings every day as well. So to extend a child's learning in London is basically how long is a piece of string you can do whatever you want, wherever you want, within reason, of course. There's risk assessments, there's everything behind the scenes that we do all the time. But you might start your day if a child's um, really interested in dinosaurs and they're just non-stop talking dinosaurs, not a problem. All right, we're going to catch the 88 bus on our trip today and we're going to go to the Natural History Museum and we're going to go see the dinosaurs at the moment. You're, you could go for walks around your local area. You'll know every shop owner in your area because the children go and they make sure they they say hello and good morning and everything like that but they can go on trips too we've looked after police horses they go to watch the changing of the guards they go to other nurseries for trips and outings they go some days they do a choose your own adventure where the children have a map of the local area and they can pick where they want to go so we're doing we're exposing them to feel a few different aspects of reading maps we look at mathematical concepts we look at the numbers on the buses as we go colors shapes that sort of thing but it is how long is a piece of string chinese new year was a great option where the children went to chinatown and they watched the dragons dancing um, and all sorts of things there as well so that was the biggest change for me is having the access to london for your children where you can extend a child's learning to the endless possibilities was absolutely incredible. So it's the first time you do it, it is quite daunting because you're not used to it. But then after that, it's one of the highlights of your day. And when I was a manager, I still took the children out every day because I just liked going out on trips, to be honest. Yeah, especially when um, the novelty of when I was personally in London of, you know, jumping on the tube and, you know, within wherever you are, um, five, 10 minutes, you're in West London um, or, you know, Buckingham Palace is just around the corner. So, um, yeah, the the I, the feel of being on a living holiday really does stay there a lot of the time, especially being from overseas. So the fact you can take, um, you know, the children out on a visit and end up at the, yeah, potentially run past the House of Commons or the Tate Modern, whatever it is. Um, those are really exciting moments. So, um, yeah, hopefully everyone's, yeah, definitely looking forward to that. And if you have any questions on this, everyone, please definitely post um those questions into the chat um as and when they pop up so yeah you definitely get used to shepherding you know 30 children onto the underground they get used to <laughs> you know the trains they you know know how to stay in a big group you know, it's good fun going on you know public transport and exploring with the little ones they love yeah it. definitely and and i know something um which everyone's probably really interested to know like the ratios and how that looks comparatively um to australia and you know working at least specifically how that might even differ a little bit across different nursery groups across the uk and london specifically so um yeah nick if you're happy just to run through this one that'd be that'd be great yeah not a problem so we do have slightly different ratios from Australia and New Zealand. With our zero to two year olds, three months to two year olds, we have a one to three ratio. For the two to three year olds, we have a one to four ratio. And for our three to five year olds, we have a one to eight ratio. So it is less, but it does depend on the size of the room as well. So although they sound absolutely amazing and they are amazing ratios, some of the rooms, depending on the size, can have up to 20 toddlers. I think our biggest room for babies is 16 babies and our biggest preschool room across the nurseries is maybe 40 children a day. That does sound like very, very large numbers. But if you think about it, if you have 20 toddlers there, you'll have five full-time teachers, you'll have your lunch covers as well, and you won't have 20 toddlers in one room at one time. It's just about organisation for the day. So you might have four children are going on their morning trip, another four might be in the, um, in the garden, another four might be having snack, another four might be doing their circle time, and the other four are doing free play or something like that. It does sound like a lot of numbers, but the way we organize our nurseries, it's we have a duty of care to the children, so they won't ever be in the same space at the same time. But with our preschool rooms, if you think about 40 children in one space, we'll also have seven teachers in that room and also two lunch covers as well and our managers are supernumerary and our deputies are so there's the ratios are amazing and you do get to be with your children a lot more than we than you normally would um, we also run an online system with tablets or observations and things like that. But
but we have cut the observations down to the bare developmental minimum because we want our teachers to be with our, their children more. So you have your statutory obligations of what you need to complete, which is quite minimum. And then the rest of the time, we don't want teachers on tablets. We'd like them with their children as well. We run a key worker system as well. So you actually have a key group of children that you're in charge of developmentally moving them forward. You're the first point of call for the parents. You have a code key worker. So if you're not there, they have someone else to talk to as well. But we do run a key worker system with them, all the nurseries. Amazing. Um, great. So we're going to go into a bit more of the detail about making the move as well. So it's really good to learn about, um, you know, working in the amazing Leaf Nurseries um, whilst um, working in the earlier space in the UK. Just want to quickly throw to a poll, Joe, just as you start introducing this slide as well, which I'm um, a little bit rogue. This poll wasn't in the slide, so I do apologise, uh, Nick and Joe, but just wanted to know um, if everyone has been to the UK before. We haven't asked that one yet, but really keen to oh, learn. That's a like, great question. <laughs> yes. Yes. I think it must, it must have been in there. It must have slipped out. I don't know how. Um, but everyone just wanted to post back into the chat if you've been to the UK before. Um, we'd love to know that just as um, the next couple of slides, we go into the nitty gritty of the move itself. We won't cover everything, but we will give you some really good high level overview of um, yeah what it's like to make that journey onwards to the UK. So everyone just wants to post into the chat, just a simple yes or a no or um, when you went, whatever you like, um, but a yes or oh, no. Look, we'll yeah, Lara's fine. been, fantastic. And no problem if you haven't been. <laughs> That's yeah. also, and no, Amy's not been, it's all new for you, Sabrina. Yes, Brooke has, fantastic. Lots of people, kind of a bit of an insight into what to expect, expect but it's always different, isn't it? When you go somewhere on holiday, it's yeah. different um, to moving there. And it's a massive question, why why move away? and uh, Why move to the UK? Well, there's, no, there's so many different reasons why you might want to make that move and everyone's motivations, I'm sure, uh, might be quite different. And if I think back to um, the big move when I moved over to Australia, um, well, look, that was definitely um, literally the best thing I have ever done. And um, if anyone had asked me at the time, why are you moving? I would have said, I don't really know. I just, just because I can was my, uh, you know, my reason. But moving away can just do so much for you. It gives you that chance to live and um, explore a different culture, explore, you know, a different country. It's so different to going on holiday somewhere as to actually being there and living it gives you a chance to get, step outside your comfort zone. And, you know, I had a chance to just explore different parts of my personality that I didn't even know existed. I'm such an outdoor person now, um, but you would have never have caught me camping in the UK. Um, you know, the weather's completely different. That was not appealing to me. Well, I ended up camping in Australia for four months. I definitely say it's a hobby of mine just to get out there and um, get dirty and, uh, you know, use a campfire. And also coming back from your overseas experience and, um, you know, that experience that you can put down on your resume is going to be so highly regarded. It's really going to make you stand out from the crowd, isn't it? And um, you're going to your CV is going to look completely different. You're going to have so much to talk about in interviews um, and, you know, different examples and different um, ways of thinking or different pedagogies that you've learned about. And plus, you'll have that amazing glowing reference from LEAF, a really, really highly regarded organization. Um, and they can, you know, speak your praises, I'm sure. But look, the best thing for me when I traveled, um, you know, was having that chance to explore, to go to the Komodo Islands, sea dragons, scuba dive, whatever it was. And I'm so excited now to be back in the UK to be able to explore Europe. Um, to be able to take, so a couple of weeks ago, I took a £35 flight um, over to spend my weekend in Italy um, and eat pasta for the weekend um, and, you know, eat as much as I could until I was stuffed. Um, Europe really is there on your doorstep. I'm also going to Greece, hopefully, um, when, the, you know, the summer's nearly over in the UK, I'm going to hop to Greece and get a little bit of winter sunshine as well. Um, and also all of those on, ongoing friendships. I'm still in contact with all my friends over in Australia. You really um, have that chance to bond and meet people um, in a completely different setting and you're, you'll just be friends for life. Um, you're thrown into spending, you know, Christmases together, Easter's together, and they become your family as well. Um, so it's a really, really special, um, special experience traveling yeah. away. Definitely. A lot of the friends, um, are my closest friends, my partner are people that we met living overseas. Um, and that's, we've been home for nearly three years now and we're still catching up with people we met in London all the time. So yeah, great stuff, yeah. Joe. And where, where can people live? Like where if people think in London, the amazing city it is, um, where, where are the options for them? Where, for, with Leaf specifically? 
Yeah, so look, London is absolutely huge. I grown, grew up on the edge of London on a place called Essex. Um, absolutely huge and so much to explore, so much bigger um, than even Melbourne and Sydney. And, and if you know exactly where you want to live in London, maybe you've got friends, um, then you can definitely let us know. But the great thing is there's over 40 different nurseries spread all across um, all areas of London. So um, you really, you know, do have pick of the area. Um, you know, maybe you want to be living, you know, closer into the city centre and you want to be in the thick of it, or you might want it to live, um, you know, in the greener, more rural areas. Um, for example, I actually live slightly off this map, um, but I, you know, travelling, public transport is great. Um, I have the best of both worlds of living in, you know, a leafy suburb, um, but travelling in to London cheaper um, living out or you can live in the city centre where there's you know lots of friends to make and um, you can just let us know and um, you know where your preference will be and we'll try to work around you know what might suit you best and if you have absolutely no idea of where you want to live in London that is absolutely fine and um, that is not a problem at all and um, you know we can work with you to, to know you know what type of thing you're looking for and we'll find you somewhere that we think would really really suit you. Definitely. Um... Oh, sorry, I'm just going to quickly throw you to another poll there as well. Um, so I want to know where everyone wants to live in London. Um, and I think we might have one more poll after this and we'll then power through the, the back end of the slide. So we've got about 15 minutes to go. We did start a little bit late, but we'll promise we'll try our best to finish on the hour mark. But if everyone just wanted to post into the chat um, where in London or maybe somewhere else, it doesn't have to be specifically in London, you might have another thought in your mind. Maybe it is Essex or maybe it is Surrey and you want to commute into London perhaps. Um, but yeah, if everyone just want to post into that, to the chat where you wanted to live. I personally lived in East London my whole time, um, but there's so many hotspots across London, um, whether it's the Southwest, the Southeast, the Northwest, um, it truly is an amazing city. So yeah, Joe hit the nail on the head there. There's just so many amazing things about London um, and just the UK as a whole. So um, if everyone wanted to post in um, where you might want to live, um, that would be awesome. Um, I'm conscious of time too, so we'll keep moving through the slides, uh, but do post I'll let you know in. if anyone posts them, Tyler. Yeah, they, I've got one eye on it, so uh, don't don't worry um so when to go is obviously a really big question too so you might be um got to this stage of the webinar and you're thinking this sounds amazing but i'm not sure when i can go uh the good thing is there's lots of options so the idea for us is that we'll ideally look to have educators arriving in different cohorts so we'll have educators arriving um in july October, January and April. Um, the idea for this is that you'd be able to then land with other educators and be supported and hopefully even catch up before you move to the UK. A lot of Melbournians on the call. We're really big on the events um, focus, which you've already spoken about. So you have the opportunity to meet other people before and after you arrive. Um, but having that support from the learning development team with LEAF will be a big focus of that. Um, if your dates don't align with this for whatever reason, that is totally fine. Um, what we'll be able to do is talk with you on your specific plan because um, a part of the follow-up from this is um, understanding when you want to go and what your preferences are and how we can make that journey um, into re or that dream really into reality. So um, yeah, these dates are like a framework, if you would, um, but there is flexibility to that too. So just keep us posted if um, you know these dates don't work for you for whatever reason. Um, but good to know there are lots of different options. Um, and just one little nuance um, across, we've already mentioned a few um, uh terminology differences, if you would, early childhood, early years, nursery, centre, et cetera. Um, but one another one is public holidays are called bank holidays um, in the UK. So if you're in a, a nursery and you start um, even things such as like football, um, uh, that doesn't mean AFL, that uh, means for us soccer, but don't say soccer. Um, so those little things go a long way. And um, Nick and the team um, at LEAF, they're really supportive and giving you all the tools you know uh, you'll need to be able to make that transition really smoothly. Um, but we've got one person who's going to... Um, uh, like Nahima, who wants to move to Camden, which is a great spot. I, I yeah. hope you've been to Camden, Nahima. It's an awesome spot. You can um, you know, investigate the markets. It's on the edge of the river. Um, some amazing pubs in Camden and lots of... Actually, I'm off to Camden tomorrow. I'm going to go see Peaky Blinders Immersive Theatre Experience. In oh, a, wow, that's fun. Camden Roundhouse. Yeah. So, um, yeah, awesome Love spot. Love that. Yeah, Love I actually lived in, I lived in Camden for my first three months ah. in a big share house, actually. And then I moved to Hackney. So um, I loved Camden. It's um yeah, really, really cool place. So yeah, if anyone else is thinking to move there, um definitely yeah, put it on the top of the list. Um and we'll we have lots of resources on the move, area guides, where to live, how to find accommodation. Not in this webinar, we won't go through it. All a part of the follow-up, opening a bank account, um, you know, uh, all the nitty-gritty of national insurance numbers, um, you know, visa applications and all that. So that will come later. Um, 
one quick poll. Um, I know we didn't get heaps of answers to that last one, but we will try one more time. Um, just wanted to know when everyone wants to go to the UK. So everyone just feel free to post into the chat um, uh, when you want to go. Um, so Nima, um, you've got Camden, which is great. Let us know uh, when you're looking to go and then anyone else post into the chat. Um, but yeah, Joe, just talk us through the work options whilst, um, whilst everyone's posting into the chat um, when they're looking to go. <laughs> Yeah, um, there are, you know, so different options available and um, depending on what you're looking at and, um, you know, doing when you get here. And also, if you're not thinking, um, you know, I, I want to get here and work out what to do, that's also fine as well. And um, we've got supply day to day work if you're wanting. Um, so supply is the same um, word that we might use for casual or relief teaching um, over in Australia. That's that day to day work or block um, work at different centres all around. You can keep in touch with us um, and we can let you know a little bit more about that. Or we have, um, you know, these permanent contracts that we've discussed with LEAF. So that's taking on your permanent or your part time positions um, with LEAF. Um, for one to two years or two if you have a visa that runs for longer and that comes with um, you know the full um, career development and benefit options and the leaf relo relocation packages um, and also if you're thinking you want to explore leaf um, and you would like to maybe come for a shorter contract we can discuss the opportunities of having three to six month contracts as well um, with leaf so different options to suit whatever you're looking for yeah, awesome. And this one's probably the big focus for us, like just giving that job security and the ability to start in a contract or permanent contract role as soon as you touch down um, in London and the UK. So, um, yeah, definitely lots of options, but um, we really encourage everyone to consider that permanent contract as well. So you get all those benefits and you get that full support that LEAF will have on offer, but not to say you won't be supported with these other ones anyway. Um, awesome. So we'll keep moving through these next few slides and we've probably about five to go, I think about three or four to go, then we'll be um, close to wrapping up. Perfect. So we did just want to include what it looks like for a qualification conversion. If you are successful through your interview process, it is part of the package that we do offer. So we will have your qualification converted for you. It is a requirement for Ofsted for all of our qualifications from overseas candidates to be converted. So we will do that for you. But if you have a level, if you have a certificate three, it is a UK level three in, it still needs to go through another process as well, but we'll, I'll discuss that at the end. If you have a diploma, it is a level four here, but they no longer have a level four equivalent. So it would most likely be going to a level three as well. If you are bachelor trained, or if you have, if you're from New Zealand and you have a graduate diploma, it is the equivalent of a UK level six here. If you have a master's, you would be considered a level seven. If you have a PhD, that's a whole different ball game. You're a doctor, so you get your own <laughs> level there. So everything, these are just guides that we like to give to people as well. So once we go through qualification conversion for you, there are two other little hurdles that go through. So Ofsted and Ectus as well, they do the qualification conversion for us. They make sure you have the right modules, you have the right uh, equivalents there, and then they'll actually get a piece of paper coming back saying, we have converted this and we are happy to tell you that you have a dot, 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 dot. So these are just guides because there are lots of training organizations, there are lots of universities, but Offset and Actus are the final step. So they will make sure that everything is converted and compliant as well for us. But that's part of the package as well. Yeah, and if you think Ofsted and Ectus, think Asequa, it's essentially the equivalent of that. Um, and the roles for LEAF um, are at this uh, UK level three to start as well. So educators with the different um, certificates or ECTs, um, LEAF will be offering these opportunities at the level three level. Um, and then you can obviously um, work up through LEAF um, as you progress within your journey, um, that one, two, three or longer year stint. Um, but yeah, just um, a nice little overview um, of what your qualifications um, should and will highly, highly likely transfer to once you touch down in the UK. Awesome. So when we were creating this package, we put all of our heads together as we're all expats in one sense or the other. And we wanted to think of what was the hardest things that we did have to do before we leave, when we arrived and what we needed ongoing. And we wanted to take that middleman out. So before you leave, like everyone's doing today, they're on the information session with us, but then there's a few different options of the interview process. If you are successful in your pre-screen with ANZ UK and with LEAF as well, then you'll be put through to an online interview. So if you are successful in the interview, you'll be offered a position before you actually leave. So that's one step out of the way. 
If you are wanting to work in any nursery, you'll, like I just said, you'll need your qualifications converted. So that's also part of the package as well. Another thing that's out of the way, we don't, we can support you with the visas or ANZ UK well, but there's also an additional service that they can offer you for that as well. We can help you locate, but we can't actually find your house, but we do have have deals for you at one of our partners with uh, London Hostel Association. They're not a typical 14 bed hostel. They are one beds with en suites that you can pay on an ongoing weekly basis. It's a one week deposit. So if you do find somewhere you found a nice share house, you find friends you want to move out with, it's a one week deposit. So at the end, you just give one week's notice and your deposit is used for that as well. So you could, before you leave, you could hypothetically have a job offer. You could organize your flat or where you're going to stay. Your visa could be assisted with ANZ UK support. And then also there's one thing I'm missing, your DBS slash police checks will also take care of that for you as well. So we're trying to think of all the different hurdles. So once that's all done, you can arrive in London, you can not rest and relax because I'm sure you'd want to go and see all the sites and things, but a lot of the things had already been done for you behind the scenes. So when you arrive, you'll have the welcome pack, you'll have catch-ups, you'll have an ongoing buddy. There's a relocation bonus offered through ANZ UK as well. If you're successful and you are offered a leaf contract and it's signed, sealed and delivered, there's also a, an additional 500 pound refer a friend bonus. So if there's someone that you did want to travel over with and they were also successful, then you'd each get 500 pound as part of our refer a friend bonus. So a little bit extra pocket money for you as well. The ongoing support, the CPD opportunities, like I said, are endless. You'll have a buddy mentor, you'll have catch-ups, you'll have all access to all the events run by NZ UK and LEAF as well. But as a thank you, if you stay for the two full years with us as well, we'll actually pay for your flight back to Australia as well as a thank you. So if you stay for the full two years, just a little bit of an extra bonus is we'll pay for your flight home as well. Amazing. That's great. Um, so exciting. So much on offer there as well. The big, um, there's so many, I guess, words um, that resonate from this, but like support definitely stands out for myself in terms of what we want to offer out to everyone. Because we know, as we've mentioned a few times, it's, it's a big move for sure. Like um, all of us, uh, myself, Joe and Nick have, have made a move in different directions. Um, so yeah, definitely know that um, the, a lot of the other team members have done a very similar thing too. So yeah, know that, um, and other educators as well. Um, and definitely in, in the post-COVID world, like I know a lot of people are really eager to travel and make the journey overseas so um even if you're thinking you're going to travel by yourself which most people do do um you will have a lot of support and a lot of opportunities to meet other people um for that journey over so um we're just going to run through the visas here as well just to give everyone a bit of a, an insight into i guess um the visa eligibility and understanding um what visa you would be applying for and as nick mentioned we can support with the youth mobility scheme visa um, and the ancestry visa the application for that visa but at the highest level, um, it's for the youth mobility visa is about 90 plus percent of people apply to come over on that visa um, from Australia and New Zealand and Canada. And um, everyone on the line uh, seems like obviously living in Melbourne, but you need to be an Australian um, citizen um, and have an Australian passport to be eligible for this visa. So currently it's under 31. And I say currently because it's changing to under 35 um, soon when the UK and Oz government um, free trade agreement fully kicks into gear for the immigration piece because you would have seen it hopefully seen a few things online um, or in the news about this so it will be changing shortly and it will go from two years to three years so it's a relatively straightforward process to apply for in particular if you go through our visa support team they're really helpful and really friendly um, you can apply within six months of when you want to go to the UK um, so if you're thinking you want to arrive in January next year you can apply from July onwards essentially so it's a pretty um, um, streamlined process from there um, um, and it takes about three to four weeks. It's, we say three to 10 here, but it really does, never takes 10 weeks anymore. Um, but we just say allow up to 10 weeks just in case there's unforeseen delays. So, um, but you could get it done within a month. So a bit of a cliche, it's a once in a lifetime visa. Once you've activated it, once you've lived there um, or in the UK, you can't then um, uh, reapply for it later. Um, so just keep that in mind. Cost about 1,200 pounds. Um, and that's the youth mobility visa in a nutshell. And the reason it costs that 1,200 pounds is you get full access to the NHS, which is the National Healthcare Service in the UK. So you'll have full healthcare coverage when you're living um, in England and you won't need to um, get additional private health insurance when you're there. If you're lucky enough to have a British grandparent, you can apply for the Ancestry visa. Um, we'll talk through this one in a lot more detail, um, or these uh, in a lot more detail in our follow-up, but hopefully 
you um, meet the criteria for these top two. Um, if you're un, um, not eligible for any of these, um, some of the other options may potentially be these ones down the bottom, um, which are the HPI visa. Um, so if you graduated from with a, um, a bachelor from Melbourne Uni or the University of Queensland, um, you'll be eligible for the HPI visa. Um, and then you've got the partner visa or the UK passport. Unfortunately, um, if you're not eligible for these visas, we can still follow up with and talk with you um, about those next steps. But unfortunately, there isn't a current opportunity opportunity available um, to move to the UK if these visas um, don't fit within your, um, uh, you know, fit within these visas, apologies for that. So, but we'll, we'll follow up with you after and just talk through the next steps um, if you do hit these criteria. So moving forward, conscious of time, so I'm going to be quick as possible here. Um, so essentially the, the process is that um, we'll uh, send a follow-up email after this uh, webinar. Um, we'll have a form which you can fill out and um, our contact details too. So you can reach, us out, reach out to us directly. Um, but essentially what it would be that we would hope to have that call with our team based here in Australia. We'll then look to um, get you in contact with Joe or Alyssa, who's one of the other UK consultants. Um, following on from those two calls, we would have learned a lot about your plans understand what you're looking for, hopefully at a much higher level. And then all things going well, if you're wanting to step forward, we then be putting you in contact with LEAF to have a first stage. Um, and then also likely second, not likely it will be a second stage interview. Um, you have two options. Um, currently an online interview can happen at any point, but the LEAF team are planning to come back for a second Australian visit. They were here a couple months ago um, in September and October too. So if you're thinking mid next year, September, October might be a really good way to meet the team. Uh, but pass the message on to your friends, anyone in your early years network, early childhood network. Um, definitely let um, everyone know that these opportunities are available. Um, but these are the two options to continue on. Nick ran through a bit of this earlier, um, but we'll give you feedback. Um, we'll make sure you're cleared to work before you go to the UK. So that stress is taken away. And then, um, yeah, you can start with LEAF across those different cohort dates too. So um, a bit of information there. And I know there's been a lot of info on this uh, webinar too. So um, don't worry if you're um, scratching around thinking, how am I going to remember all this? We will send the slides. You will get the recording. Um, but we do really want to talk to you individually after this so we can understand your own plans and how we can tailor our service to your um, specific um, you know, travel plans, your requirements, and what your um, ideal preferences are too. So um we're pretty much at yeah, the we've end got lots of people haven't we in here tyler that are looking to to travel in 2024 or towards the end of 2024 and you can see that it's not too early yeah. to start your journey now and to have conversations with us and uh, we definitely you know love to chat to you i know what bigger move it is to make mm -hmm. yeah. um you know it's nice to to start planning and putting things in place so you sort of know what's coming um so it's definitely not too early even if you're looking at end of 2024 100%. And with LEAF 2, um, we can start the process within 12 months. So if you're wanting to move for April next year, you could interview for LEAF nice and early. Um, we can have the initial call with ANZ UK straight away um, just to start that process too. So, but yeah, definitely a lot of 2024 in there as well, um, which is which is great. So um, awesome. Well, we're pretty much at the end. So just, just finally, just a few high level pieces around ANZ UK and LEAF. So um, we would have touched on a fair bit of this um, already, but just um, we'll run through just a secure a quick couple. I'm going to post into the chat now just um, a link to ANZ UK Bound Educators, which is our Facebook group. So we are very much a community um, driven um, agency. So please uh, make sure you jump into that Facebook group where you can meet other like minded educators moving to the UK. Um, these events um, will help facilitate um, you being able to meet people if you're traveling by yourself, which I've spoke about the community, the local ops. We really have so many resources um, for, to support your move. Um, so anything you can think of, there's a blog written about it that's in one of our packs. Um, from the little things to the big things, um, there, there, there are resources available and our consultants are really experienced and so is the LEAF team too. So you've got a lot of information and resources there available to you. And um, yeah, we're really excited to learn more about everyone's plans. So, um, you know, it's great to see, um, you know, just under seven, eight people on the call tonight, which is which is really exciting. So questions. Um, we promise we, we, sorry, we promised at the start of the webinar, we would give everyone time for questions. We actually haven't had too many questions come in. Um, no, I know the, yes, I don't think the last uh, webinar we had um, a month ago, there was, I reckon we would have about 30 or 40 questions throughout. So um, not to say that everyone in here doesn't um, have millions of them in their back pocket, but if you do, please post them into the chat now. Or I think it's a silly question. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> exactly. else was probably thinking it at the same time. But we do have one. Thank you, Brooke. Amazing. Um, so if I'm working towards my degree, is this program something I'm still able to do? 
Um, you would need to have um, a form of a certificate or qualification. So whether it's like a diploma or like a Cert 3, if you're, if you're referring to like a bachelor degree, you, if you're able to do that online whilst living in London or the UK, then um, yeah, you could definitely work at LEAF so long as you had that diploma or certificate already. Um, so if you are completing an early childhood bachelor's, um, if you complete two years of your early childhood bachelor's, um, you can get um, a certificate that says you have got the equivalent of a diploma level qualification in some courses. There might be something that you want to talk to your tutors about. Um, and if you actually can come out with the equivalence of study of a diploma, then that might be something that we can consider and see if that converts over. Um, but just, you know, may, making sure you communicate with your um, mm. universities to see that you would be able to you know come back and complete your study but that could be an option but you're probably looking at your first two years and making sure you've got those mandatory units completed to equivalent to a diploma thank you for covering me there joe i sort of answered it inadvertently <laughs> in the wrong way um so that's okay <laughs> yeah i did know i did know that you could do that here in australia um if you're doing your degree that it would um uh, you're able to do um yeah that so i was i was talking in terms of australia rather than a yeah. uk qualification um, and yeah. so that that is in terms of an australian bachelor's of early childhood yeah Yes, for sure. Yep. Yep. Perfect. Uh, but great question though, Brooke. And, and that one too, we can look at um, your your dates when you're due to qualify, um, you know, what that could look like. Um, and yeah, like Joe said, really encourage you to speak to your um, your university and your tutors as well, just to make sure that everything's above board for yourself. So great question. Okay, amazing. Well, I hope everyone is um, yeah, obviously really excited about the prospect of moving to the UK with the London Early's Foundation uh, in support with ANZ UK. Um, so you can still post questions in the chat. We're not completely wrapping up, but we will tie it towards the close as well. Um, so a big thank you for coming along. Um, we're really excited to, um, as I mentioned a couple of times, to follow up with you after this. So um, if you do know anyone in your network, uh, do pass on um, their, do feel free to pass on their details to ANZ UK as well. And we'd love to be able to support their journey too. Um, there are those referral bonuses um, that has been mentioned, but we don't want that to be the reason why. We're hopefully having a great experience with ANZ UK and that's why you want to refer um, someone on or, or so over with leaf too and um yeah if you want to have that follow-up um we will send an email um there will be just a nice little form that you can fill out just with your details too and then what we'll do is have one of our team members follow up with you as um the next steps and have an individual conversation with you um from there then hopefully you can progress and um, have a conversation with nick and the team in due course so thank you everyone for um, sort of hoping a last minute question pops up. I'm not sure if it's going to come in. So um, a massive thank you everyone for tuning in. We know it's late in the afternoon. Um, there's no Kiwis on the line, but um, I know in Australia it is um, in, in Melbourne is 8 p.m. here. So hopefully um, you have an amazing dinner ready to go or you have already eaten your dinner and you're getting ready to jump into bed. Um, Joe and Nick, thanks so much as well. Um, and it was and thank been you so much for taking your evening out, Tyler, for joining us. No, not at all. Absolute pleasure. <laughs> thank you, Nick. <laughs> Amazing. Um, cool. Perfect. Well, um, yeah, reach out if anyone has any further questions. But um, yeah, thanks so much. And everyone have a lovely evening. Thanks very much. Cheers.